I'm taking his vlog again. Okay, great. No! Put me in it, man. Ah! Fine, don't put me in it. Edit that up. I don't want to be on YouTube. I'm on YouTube. I'm on YouTube. I'm on my way. Check that check Well, Jim left early and he wanted me to take his truck um, so that um, no, so I can get make sure to get all the wash time kids and everything. So it looks like I did not get the door shut. So I'll shut that and then we'll drag out and keep them open. So I finally been getting around and ugh, cleaning off all this old gasket material and whatnot so here on the back I got everything scraped off but there's some spaces like right here Try to clean some of these that stuff up, um, and then we'll just clean it all up and whatnot. And hopefully, I can get those bearings pressed on. And then, if we can, and then we'll close this thing up. And if we can't, then yeah, I don't know. Well, finally, I got these stupid bearings on. Um, yeah, so, I, did, I was not able to find a bearing press, presser without buying one for a thing total, like, 200 bucks, so, yeah, but I did find and read somewhere that basically, um, not necessarily for these, but for just bearings and bearings in general. You stick basically like the inside or whatever. You stick one in a freezer or ice box, something like that, get really cold. Take your other one and heat it up. I didn't do the heat because that would mean I would have to heat up these bearings, which I do not want to do. And you don't want to do either. So, I just threw my whole differential in the freezer for probably 45 minutes or so. And then I was able to get a socket and place it on there and whack it a few times. And I was finally able to get it to start and then I was just able to easily get it in. So, now I'm going to go ahead and make sure all these bolts are tight. Um, and then check and make sure there's nothing else not to do in the, the rear end before I can put all this together and then we will put it all together <clears throat> so here is our old shims new again a new old but getting ready to put those on but oh, so when I do this, I'm actually going to, well actually since I got the same kit that was already on it, it's pretty nice because you already have a good idea of placements and anything. But if you can see, right up here. 
here. That big gear, I think, has been like rubbing and cutting up against that. Like you can see right there, it looks like the bolt or well, the bolts in there have been hitting it too much. So what I'm gonna do is put more shims over here or thicker shin, shims and pushing it that way to hopefully help that out so that we won't have, <clears throat> won't be rubbing anything up there. And hopefully we won't have the issue that we just had and we're trying to fix. So, yeah. Yeah, so we're getting ready to just put it in. Um, one thing about this one was a Detroit True Track um, is the way it holds the axles in place. Um, so you can see here, you just have one hole, no others. Whereas, on my other one, on the posi, you can see, I mean, obviously got those holes, but you have you got this hole here, and this one here. And then a bolt that goes through there. And those those holes bolt again is for these. And that together holds in the axles and holds the axles in place. So now this is short tree chop. This is everything that holds it together. It's basically you stick that inside, you take this, stick it like that, and then you take that clip and it goes on the outside. And all that holds your axle in, or axles in. And if you need a little diagram, guess what, they send you one. So. Here's just kind of part slide ram, snap ring, retaining cylinder, and axle spacer. Look here, you can see here, axle spacer goes in, retaining cylinder goes in after it, and that snap ring goes and seals it all up. So, and that's how that works. But, First, we gotta put it in and get spacers correct. Then we will be able to put anything together. All right, it's now a little after 10 and I finally got these, um, um, what are uh, these shims. I finally got them how I want them. So we're now following bolting down and getting these um, whatever the carrier bearing bolt cover things whatever I don't know um, getting those on getting them torqued down um, put it you put some Loctite on them now every vehicle is maybe a little bit different so you want to look at the specs however for my truck, ow, it's about 60 foot pounds torque. So we're torquing, torquing these down to 60. And then once I get those done, I'm gonna do one more check for everything, make sure everything's all working correctly. And then we'll put the cover on, um, get RTV and yeah, make a little gasket and put the cover back on. Alright, so I just made sure both surfaces were completely clean. So now, getting ready to put this on. You can see the uh, best results should be used clean dry. 
blah, 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 blah. Apply a continuous 1 16th to 1 quarter inch bead of silicone to one surface. Surrounding all bolts, assemble parts immediately while silicone is still wet. Finger tighten until material begins to squeeze out around flange. Uh, let dry for one hour, then tighten to torque spec specifications. Allow 24 hours to dry or to fully cure before filling with fluids or returning to service. So, what we're going to do is I'm about to put it all around. You want to do this again, you want to make, try to make as continuous a beat as you can. You want to make sure you go around all bolt holes. Go all the way around. And whatever. Um, and then, like, immediately, you're going to want to put it on. And, hand again, hand tighten it. Dang it. That would be a good thing to put in. <laughs> So I will do that first, um, but then, yeah, so you're hand tighten it until it starts to squeeze out, then stop, let it dry for an hour, then torque it down, and then wait 24 hours before filling it with fluids. So this is basically how this works, um, to put all this together, and then first you want to get all your metal stuff off your magnet so you can show people on YouTube. Basically, from this disc, well, first of all, you want to get both axles, pull them out as much as you can. Obviously, with C clamps already attached, you take this little disc, slide it in like that. Once you get it in there, then you take that. In there like that. Now you'll take your little clip and get it in there and you're done. Now I really like this because one you don't have a little bolt in there that can get stripped or be hard to get out. Um, you just have to worry about one clip. Two I like the center in there because it's almost like having not quite but almost like having one full axle um, which would be able to handle more torque and whatnot I would assume then move on to this this is nice because obviously it holds everything in but they have four holes in it that way you can still get good um, oil flow going in there so I'm liking this so far so finally at 10.59, finally got that snap ring in there. So now really quickly I'm going to put the whatever on there, the gasket maker, whatever, RTV, and then put the cover on, and then we'll probably go eat dinner. And then come back out and torque it and then go to bed. So, let's finish this up. Yay! It's finally dinner time. And it was like almost 12 hours ago that I ate. Huh. It'll be another 12 before I eat again. So, might as well have a couple of these. So, just came back out, made sure they're all torqued down. Um, when you do this, we'll make sure you do it in a cross, crisscross pattern. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so this is going to be it for tonight. So, please make sure to like and subscribe. And keep coming back and checking out more videos.